Hey guys, this is just going to be a quick build video showing how to make dust collection for this Fikita 5007MG circular saw. Most of the dust sawdust from this is meant to be guided up and around here and out this little port where Makita has conveniently provided an M5 screw hole and they sell dust collection attachments for their other circular saws, some of them. I couldn't seem to find them selling the dust collection attachment for this model of saw, so I'm making my own. I'm planning to make it out of, this is an M5 screw to go in the screw hole. This is one inch PVC conduit. The actual part that mates with my shop vac is here. This is a flared end that happens to fit just perfectly in a shop vac like that. I believe this comes out to 40 and a half millimeters. I only have this weird elbow shape because this is what the orange hardware store near me was selling in one inch with a flared end. If I could have bought just this part of it and straight with the flared end, I would have, but this is what I had. In the theory, um, I'm gonna cut this at a 45 degree angle and it'll attach on here like this and the shop vac can hook up here. And the screw M5 goes in there and holds it in place. Um, this is gonna keep the blade guard forwards a little bit. So rather than the blade guard sitting down here with the dust collection, it's gonna have to sit there. I'm gonna be doing this project with my Makita circular saw, a speed square to do a 45 degree angle cut, some random blocks of wood as supports, and a bunch of clamps. I've also got some sandpaper. This is 220 grit. Uh, because it's what I have. This is just a knock off the edges on the PVC pipe. We're also using um, just a cordless drill and some drill bits. As always, PPE is important. I don't know how much dust uh, PVC actually makes, but I don't want to find out. Uh, earplugs for the saw and eye protection. I'm going to start with a practice cut. Um, I've never cut PVC with a circular saw before. I think it's probably doable and it should come out all right. This is the end that I want to mate with my shop vac, um, and I don't need this much PVC pipe in between. So I'm going to start a cut on this end, maybe a couple cuts to practice and see how it goes, and then the final one I'm actually going to do is probably going to be a 45 degree, like there. This is the jig I've put together for this cut. Everything's clamped in place. This is just being held a little tight under the speed square there. Uh, that's just to support the base plate of the circular saw and keep it all square. I'm going to run the right side of the circular saw along the speed square and cut a 45 degree uh, cut on the end. This is just a test cut to make sure that this saw and this blade can cut PVC cleanly. I would say that went okay. It was uh, a little chattery. The cut itself is decently clean. This is the start, this is the end, so it snapped off on the final little bit there. And for me, that's a perfectly good quality finish. Got PVC flakes all over the saw. I really wish I had a <laughs> dust collection for this guy, hey? I think I want a steeper angle on there. I might ditch the speed square and just clamp a piece of wood down at a steeper angle like uh, that. I want the opening to be as long as this opening, 59.4 millimeters. The inside diameter of this pipe is 26 millimeters. Some quick trigonometry says we want a 20 degree cut on this. So a uh, 20 degree angle here like that, which is gonna be quite shallow. Clamping a curved object square. It's a mess of clamps. We're gonna run the circular saw along the top of these like two by four, two by sixes and against this straight edge and cut around where this pencil mark is. It's hard to draw a straight pencil mark on a curved part, but the saw blade should track about here. So now you can get an idea of what this is gonna look like. Um, the saw is unplugged as usual. It's got this little tail on here, don't worry about that, we're going to take that off. Now, the obvious way to mount it, because the sawdust kind of comes around and goes out this way, is like 
this. It would also give a little more room for the handle for the guard to go back. The catch is that the screw hole is back here and I need to be able to get a socket or something down in here to screw it if I do it there. The other way I could do it is flip it around like this, which will look a little silly because the sawdust is coming around and it kind of goes around back that way. And that has the nice benefit of being able to put the screw in the thin side here. Um, also because of the way this is cut, this is pretty flat and it'll sit pretty flush I think. Uh, the catch is just this will be a little bit further, further up like that, which exposes more of the saw blade there. This really is the natural way to put it. Although I don't like it sticking below the, uh, the base plate there. We're going to go for 11 64ths. There you go. Um, this little bit here is going to get chopped. It kind of looks like this handle can be flipped around. Um, it won't be quite as ergonomic, but I'm going to try it. Just a Phillips screw here. But it looks like they've made it so you can just flip it there, um, which seems like a very odd place to have a handle. Is that going to make it really annoying to change the blade? Maybe. <laughs> it just depends which is less safe between having the guard only come to here or having the guard in the center. <laughs> but that's the gist of it. And, uh,. <laughs> I'm not convinced by this either, um, but I think it's good for now. It's just whether it blocks uh, the arbor in the center. It's a moment of truth. <laughs> it's pulling out there a little bit, which I don't love. I just uh, tighten this down a little bit more, and it's super solid. Um, I think I'm going to do some practice cuts with this and uh, see how the dust collection goes. I'll give you the good and the bad. Starting with the bad, um, the shop vac was pulling this out a little bit, so there was a gap there, and it wasn't applying full suction because there's just not enough stiffness in that little piece of PVC. The second bad thing is my shop vac hose is kind of short, and it was a little bulky. I mean, once you're using a corded tool, you've got to deal with a little bit of a, uh, you know, manipulating it to get it in the right orientation. And the shop vac didn't add too much annoyance to that, but it added some. On the good side, there is zero sawdust around here. Um, and it actually worked great and it sucked all the sawdust out, uh, which is what I wanted it for. I would not use this if I was doing any framing outside. So in the summer, I will probably never use this because I would do any kind of cuts like that outside. This is really nice though for in the winter, like now when it's minus whatever outside. And I'm working in the garage, because now I don't have to sweep up in here. Well guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the build video. For $4 of parts, I think this attachment is worth it for how well it works. There are definitely some improvements I could do and for four dollars I might redo this project and try to do it a little bit better um, especially just the little gap there it seems to work fine but it would be nice if that gap wasn't there and this is a bit of an awkward angle I'd prefer if it was going up this way it just depends where I can get PVC with this kind of flare on it with the right diameter to match my shop vac yeah hope you guys enjoyed and uh, have a good day